Hi everybody, it's Lisa from Sutton's Days. And today is day two of September, September 2nd. And today we're going to talk about probably one of the single most important items that you need to prepare with, okay? And that's water. Um, I know, I mean, if, if you've paid attention to anything at any time, you know that water is the one thing that we absolutely must have. You can go without food, you can go without other things, but water is something that you absolutely must have, okay? So, um, I again, excuse me for my notes, but um, a big part of preparing your water, okay, preparing what you're going to do for water, how you're going to, you know, everything to do with water, is you need to determine how much you need. So, um, the... The recommended amount is one gallon per person or animal per day, and that will take care of uh, your intake, okay? That will take care of any uh, food preparation and possibly leave some left over for hygiene, okay? So one gallon per person or animal per day. That can add up pretty quick. So your first, your first step is to be sure to try to do three days, okay? So... I'm looking at primarily Phil and I, okay? So I'm looking at two, well, no, I'm not. Phil and I and two dogs and two cats, <laughs> okay? So the cats, I'm not going to do a gallon each for them. But um, for Phil and I, that's two gallons. For the two dogs, that's two gallons. And then for the two cats, I'll do a gallon. So that's five gallons per day. So five gallons per day for three days, that's 15 gallons of water, okay? Now I want to amp that up. I want to go for an entire month. I want to have a month's worth of water. Technically, I want three months worth of water. So you're looking at roughly 90 days at five gallons. That's 450 gallons that I want to figure out how to store, okay? There are different ways to do this. There are different routes that you can take. Um, a whole gallon jug is not necessarily a, a convenient or easy way to do it, okay? Um, you can do water bottles, but again, that's a whole bunch. Most water bottles, I think, are like 16 ounces, so you need to do your math on that. You need 32, 64, so that's four 16-ounce bottles per person per day, okay? So you can diminish a little bit of that storage space with the bottles, but those bottles are not really good for any kind of longer-term storage. They're good if you're going to put them into rotation. If you were to drop a few hundred dollars and buy X amount of bottled water, okay, and then rotate it through. You have to rotate it through because those bottles are normally pretty thin, at least the really affordable ones are. They're pretty thin and they're not meant for long term storage, okay. Gallon jugs, not, you know, not really long term storage, but longer than the water bottles. Um, but the first, the first thing is figuring out how much you need. Now, some things to factor in uh, when you're considering how much you need, okay, is children. Uh, nursing mothers, sick adults, sick children, um, any kind of medical emergency that might crop up. You might need a little bit of extra water. If you live in a very warm climate, like say Texas or Arizona, okay, you're going to want and need a little bit more water than say I would here in Northern Michigan. Okay. The one, you know, ration your food, but really don't ration your water because you really do need that liquid intake every single day. Um, and you need a certain amount every single day to function properly so that your body functions properly, your mind functions properly. And without those two things, the rest of it really doesn't matter. So don't ration your water, ration your food, okay? Um, carbonated beverages and coffee don't really count. You're looking to hydrate. That's, that's, that's the long-term goal there. So yes, I'm a coffee drinker, I'm a Diet Coke drinker, but... When you're looking at storage, when you're looking at emergency situations, you definitely want regular, just plain old water. Now, no matter all the different ways that you can store the water, and if you go on to uh, Google and Google it, then you will find all different kinds. There are these bricks that they have that you can store water, and there's all kinds of things that you can store water in, 55-gallon tubs, you know, all that thing. The, the key, though, whatever you store it in, you want to make sure that you put it in a cool, dry place, not freezing but a cool, dry place, okay? Um, and you want to make sure that they're food-grade containers that you're putting the water into. Otherwise, you've got things leaching into your water, and you don't want that. Um, the next consideration for water is water treatment. Now, every time Amazon does a really great sale or anybody else does a really great sale on things like Life Straws, I know a bunch of us run out there and grab extra ones to put into our, uh, our pantry, okay? Because... 
it's a great thing to have. One should last one person an entire year. It'll clean X amount out of the water, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, those are really great to have. Have you ever used yours? Have you ever pulled one out and actually tried using it? Have you walked over to that pond and pulled the water out and seen if it was any good? Um, highly recommend getting used to them and trying them because that's that's important. It's it's a practice thing. Just owning it does not make it work. You know, you really need to know what you have. There are all kinds of different ways to treat water. There are pills. There are filtration systems. Um, there's things like the Life Straw. So you want to get familiar, mosquito. You want to get familiar <laughs> with squirrel um, with how how you can treat them. How you know the different ways that it's possible to treat. Uh, your water so that it is potable. Okay. Uh, one way to handle uh, water is boiling. Now, you know, even in the city, there are times when you have boil water alerts. Okay. But I found this and, and this was news to me. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's news to you. Maybe it's not, but boiling is the safest method of treating water, large pots or kettle. You can bring it to a rolling boil for a full minute. Keep in mind that some water will evaporate. Let that water cool before drinking. You, know, uh, you want to be very careful of, and to make sure that the methods that you're using are pulling everything you need out of the water. Another way is chlorination. Um, you can, just like your pool, okay, and, and, and I've heard lots of emergency situations where people use their pool water um, when everything went down. They use their pool water for a while because that's chlorinated. It's good water. There's chlorine in our drinking water. Um, it's there for a reason. It's not optimal, obviously. It's not the, the best solution. But if you have city water, okay, there's chlorine in your water. Um, you just are so used to it that you don't even notice. Now, we're here with well water, and when I go into town, I can smell the chlorine. So it's there. It's, you know, a fair amount, excuse me, um, but it's still, it's not, there are debates on whether it's good or bad for you, okay? But it's clean, it kills bacteria, it's a sterilization method. Um, you can add 16 drops, an eighth of a teaspoon uh, of bleach per gallon of water. An eighth of a teaspoon. So you're not talking about very much, okay? And let it stand for 30 minutes. The water should have a slight bleach odor. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get that. If it doesn't, then repeat the dosage and let it stand for another 15 minutes. If it still does not smell like chlorine, discard it and find another source of water. Okay. Um, there's also distillation, Dist distillation, like, like a still, you know, like a still, how's that? Um, and you know, you would have to look in how to do that because I'm not familiar with it. Um, but that's another way to purify water. Um, there, there's all different kinds of ways. Number one, start storing it. Number two, learn how to treat it. Okay. Number three, use the tools that you've invested in so that it, if anything happens, it's not a new experience. You're familiar with it. Those are really big, okay? So I hope today's chat about water was helpful. If you have any additional information, please put it in the comment section below. I love the discussions that are occurring. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We'll see you tomorrow with another chat. And until next time, be safe.